Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about several topics that I've been fascinated with since I was really really young. The asteroid that led to the demise of dinosaurs combined with the idea behind the tsunami that it created, and more specifically, a mega tsunami. And today we're going to discuss this new research that came out not so long ago that actually discovered some really unusual formations on the bottom of the ocean that was very likely produced by the mega tsunami that was created by this asteroid. Something that you sort of see right here in this image. But I'm going to be explaining what exactly you're looking at right here in a few minutes. First of all, we know that the asteroid that collided with the planet 66 million years ago did not just create a tsunami. It had a lot of different effects. Effects that we're still learning about even today. First of all, the debris from the explosion spread around the planet and ended up creating a lot of different wildfires in many different ancient forests. It's actually believed that about 75% of all of the forests burned down within only a few weeks after this. It also released a tremendous amount of various sediments from the seafloor where the asteroid hit the planet and this ended up acidifying the oceans within only a few weeks as well. The acidity of the oceans increased so much that it actually led to the demise of many different ocean organisms. Something that is actually happening today as well, but for a slightly different reason. And then there were also obvious atmospheric effects such as dust storms and just the overall increase in dust in the air which lowered the temperature of the planet for at least a few decades, which eventually led to the demise of most of the dinosaurs. But because the asteroid hit the ocean near the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, this also naturally created an extremely large tsunami. But not a regular tsunami, not a type of a tsunami we've heard about back in 2004 or the one from Japan in 2011. These types of waves are slightly different and are produced in a very different way as well. Instead what it created was known as a mega tsunami. And this is an entirely different concept despite a similarity in a name. Mega tsunamis have happened on the planet for different reasons as well, with the most recent one happening in 2015 in Alaska, but we normally don't get any footage of them. And there's also almost no way to predict them or to catch them in the act. They're very sudden, they're extremely quick, and they are extremely destructive. So first, a regular tsunami. Let's watch this video that explains how all of this works. Both of the tsunamis in 2004 and 2011 were a result of some sort of a seismological activity and also were a result of an earthquake. In this case, a displacement by the tectonic plate sort of lifts the layer of the water here and creates a somewhat small but very very fast moving wave across the open ocean. Normally these waves are actually almost invisible unless of course you know what you're looking for. But as they approach the shore and as they get closer and closer to land, they experience a sudden slowdown in their velocity but also a sudden increase in their height. And normally they also come as a kind of a tsunami train as you see right here. And this is what happened in Southeast Asia in 2004 and in Japan in 2011. And so as the wave starts approaching the land, the recession of the ocean right here indicates that a large amount of water is about to strike the land. Now this doesn't really happen right away, it usually takes at least um, a few minutes, possibly even half an hour, but eventually you'll notice how this sudden surge starts to approach the land itself. It's not really a very large wave, sometimes it's really only a few meters in height, but it's a huge amount of water and it's a sudden surge that just keeps coming and coming and coming. Now that's literally what we call a tsunami. And this is exactly what happened both in Japan and in countries like Indonesia. Now this is a very destructive event, but it's not destructive because the wave is tall or because the water is moving fast, it's destructive because there's so much water just that keeps coming and coming and coming. And this can actually last for hours and sometimes even last for many hours. And in some cases it actually repeats several times because of the idea of that tsunami train I showed you previously. But a mega tsunami is something almost entirely different. Here's an example from 1958 from Alaska, probably the most famous mega tsunami known because this one was actually witnessed and survived by two people fishing in this area known as the Lituya Bay, located right here in Alaska. And this particular bay is sort of the epicenter for many of these unusual phenomena known as mega tsunami. It has happened in the past before that. There are actually several amazing videos created by Dr. Stephen Ward, whose channel you can find in the description below, that explain all of this visually by using these brilliant simulations. So here's how a typical mega tsunami is created. It's normally related 
to a sudden collapse of a large amount of ground or some sort of a underground mudslide or in some cases a very large asteroid suddenly striking in the middle of the ocean. This sudden increase in volume essentially creates something that looks like this. It pushes the water so much that there's suddenly this huge wave that starts moving across with some waves going as high as one kilometer in height and all of these waves as you can probably imagine are extremely destructive and unlike a typical tsunami here it's going to be extremely tall extremely large even in the open ocean so here's for example one such event from the capo verde islands located in the atlantic ocean notice how the height of the tsunami here striking the island is basically close to 500 meters in height or over 1640 feet in height and that is a huge wave and so something like this happened in Alaska, and this is probably the most well-known event, but a lot of these happened in the last few decades as well. We'll actually talk more about mega tsunamis in one of the future videos in a lot more detail, so obviously make sure to subscribe not to miss this video, but some of the most powerful and most destructive ones have always happened either in Alaska or close to the coast of Norway. But going back to the original impact that destroyed the dinosaurs, let's watch the simulation by Steven Ward, of what it was probably like 65 to 66 million years ago when the asteroid hit the planet. And so in this particular case, we know that it most likely happened somewhere right here. And this created a really large but not super large mega tsunami. In this case, mostly because it was actually hitting shallow waters. With the highest peak of the wave itself very likely being less than 300 meters in height. And the waves reaching the North American shore were probably around 20 to 30 meters in height as well. So not as dramatic as we originally thought, one and a half kilometers in height, simply because the water where the asteroid hit was not actually that deep to begin with. But one thing about the tsunami is quite certain, it definitely happened. There are actual signs of deposits coming from various regions around the ocean that were actually discovered as far away as northern US in some of the regions we'll discuss in one of the previous videos. You can find this video somewhere right there. But over the years, more and more clues about the tsunami have actually been discovered through other unrelated studies. And this is one such study. So this is something that was not actually even studying tsunamis or even doing any scientific research. All of this data was collected by the petroleum industry that's basically been kind of mapping the ocean floor, trying to discover more oil deposits somewhere underneath the ground. But 65 million years ago, a big part of the southern US was essentially underwater, including Florida, including parts of Texas, and including, of course, Louisiana. And a lot of this data came from the central Louisiana, where the petroleum industry was basically mapping the ground. And at a depth of approximately one and a half kilometers, they discovered these unusual ripples, the ones you can kind of see right here, that have clearly been preserved in there for millions and millions of years. Now, normally these ripples are generated by waves. And you've probably seen these in the ocean. This is sort of the example right here. Notice how there are ripples that are actually created by the water waves. But in order for these ripples to be preserved for millions of years, some kind of a major event had to occur in order for these ripples not to be disturbed for millions of years. Such as, for example, if a tsunami wave created these ripples and then the water in this region was too deep for anything else to disturb it for millions of years afterwards. And so these mega ripples very likely were just preserved by the sediment that deposited in the depth of the ocean and eventually solidified as these ripples we see in this image. But interestingly, originally they did not actually know where these came from. In order to figure this out, they had to sort of trace back the origin of these waves by trying to look where they possibly came from, where the waves came from. And once they traced back the origin of the potential wave, it led them to the site of the original impact 66 million years ago. Now in terms of the actual properties, these mega ripples seem to have a wavelength of approximately 600 meters, which is of course the distance between the two wave crests right here, with the average height of the wave being about 16 meters or so. So obviously not the 1500 meters that was originally assumed by some of the other studies, but actually almost directly matching the simulations from Stephen Ward with the tsunami itself very likely continuing for possibly hours or possibly even several days. With these ripples in particular representing huge 16 meter waves hitting the relatively shallow shelf near the Louisiana shore and doing so for many many hours. 
Something that very likely also led to the tremendous amount of sediments being deposited in this particular region. Which means that if one day we somehow are able to retrieve samples from here, we might be able to discover some really really cool sediments and possibly even actual specimens of ancient wildlife that resided in the area. But I guess for now that's kind of all I wanted to mention. It's a pretty cool discovery, it's an amazing confirmation that a tsunami or actually a mega tsunami was created by the collision that happened approximately 66 million years ago, but more importantly it helps us understand how these tremendously powerful collisions affect the planet when they do occur. Now in some of the future videos we'll talk more about various collisions, we'll also discuss the idea of mega tsunamis, but for now that's all I wanted to mention. Check out the paper in the description below, as well as Dr. Ward's site and his channel where he explores various really cool tsunamis and simulates them using advanced techniques. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.